welcome back to Mastering Mayhem. We are gonna go ahead and assemble the Nordic Track Commercial 1750 Runners Flex treadmill here today. Thanks for joining me. Let's go ahead and do it. The customer already pretty much unboxed most of it. So we're just gonna take it from here. All right, so this Nordtech Commercial 1750 treadmill comes with the hardware setup that basically takes you step by step all the way to the final step here. So just follow these instructions, you know, with the hardware, where everything needs to go. So I really, really love this. Thank you, Nordtech. All right, so the first step, of course, is to go to nordtech.com, mynordtech.com. Register it if you want to get all the benefits and warranties and all that. But step two, right, basically right here, is we're getting the two main uprights in place on the right side and then the left side. So we end up with this installed plus the two big plastic pieces and run them over the top. So that'll be all the way to step five. But I'm going to show you guys how to get the cable through here, through the arm. They already provide a cable tie in the right side arm. Really not that difficult or... At least to me it isn't. Okay, so you see here the right arm is the one that has the cable tie pre-installed going up into the tube and then coming right out and then it comes right out the top. So this is what you're gonna use to pull to pull this guy up through the arm, okay? Show you how to tie it up. I'll do it in time lapse just so we can get it up and going. And then this is the part here. Step two is or step three is where we're starting with the small silver screw. And then step four is gonna be these bigger bolts here with the star washers to keep the bolts locked into place. These four bolts are we're gonna keep the arms into place and we'll go from there. After you tie it, you just use that pre-installed wire to pull this guy all the way through the arm. You'll see it come out of the top here. And again, you just twist the wire around a few times here and it's very unlikely that it will get loose or drop inside the post there, or inside the arm, the upright. So there you go, now you have this on the upper end there. And then here you have to make sure this guy locks into place properly. And it's, again, just, there's only one way it can go in. Just like that, and you're good to go. That's securely in place, it's just a square shape. And then this is the ground wire. They include an extra screw or a different screw, so we'll take out the one that's here and put in the one that they provided. This guy right here, it's, it basically looks exactly the same, but we'll swap it out. Okay, so this is the part I was talking about. It just pops into place there, clicks. It's got a square cut out, if, you know, if you didn't see it. I'll try to zoom in when I edit, if that helps, but. Just take this uh, ground wire screw out and take the new one. It's almost, it looks like the exact same screw, but we're gonna swap them out like they ask. And just screw this down here. Make sure you have your ground covered. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Now we can lift the upright into place and put the two side bolts where they belong to hold it up. And we'll just hand tighten it for now. Okay, so these are the bolts you're gonna use with the star washers in place to screw them into the two holes right there. Do not, uh, make sure to not pinch the wire as you install it. So you can just kind of push that out of the way as you install the upright in place. So I'll show you how we do that. for now you want to leave it loose because you have two top bolts that you need to get into place as well so just hand tighten it to hold the upright in place so it doesn't fall on you just like that 
get it pretty close to done just so it doesn't wobble too much. But there you go. You got the first upright in place. We didn't pinch the cable. We're good to go there. Let's go ahead and get the left side in place. It's exactly the same. Just line it up. And again, hand tighten it for now. And then again, you should be able to hand tighten it. No problem. Otherwise, if, if it's difficult to do it, it's probably the, the holes aren't lined up and there's some pressure somewhere or the threading isn't lined up properly. So just keep all that stuff in mind. Like right now, the back one, I gotta kinda fidget with it, but I should be able to hand tighten it. And it looks like it's pretty much there, okay? Being a little loose because we're gonna put these top bolts in, but we got the two uprights in place. Good job, guys and gals. Next step is to get these two plastic covers here in place. Let's go ahead and find those. All right, we found the two uh, plastic covers for the bottom of the uprights and the bar there. So let's just go ahead and slide them down and into place. All right, these are the four screws you need. They're Allen wrench uh, heads there. So I have my 12 volt impact driver, Allen wrench bit. And this bar here that's going between the two uprights, it's saying to tighten it down once you get everything in place. So we're gonna go ahead and do that time lapse. But these ones you definitely tighten down because this is the spacer that keeps everything lined up. And by the way, I'll include all the tools I recommend for these types of assemblies in the, in the description of the video. All right, now that we got the bar in place, everything is tightened down, it looks good, nice and straight. Next step is installing the tray here. Step seven, four screws underneath, right there you see the plate one, two, and one, two. There's four holes there, and you screw up from underneath into the tray, and it's these four screws. It's gonna be labeled step seven on that yellow, if you can see it there, the yellow hardware packet. So let's do step seven, get the tray on, and then we'll move on to step eight with the arms. Okay, now that we have the tray facing outward and installed the four screws, we are gonna put these two arms on in place. And again, always pay attention to the wire. Make sure you're not pinching it as you pull it through and get those arms in place. So let's go ahead and do step eight. All right, step eight just requires these two Allen wrench bolts here with the two star washers. They will be listed in step eight. So this is what you require for the two arms. It's just one bolt each for now. All right, so just keep this in mind that the first bolt that goes in this arm, see it's still loose, but you put it in front of this screw that's pre-installed. That bolt is in front of the screw. It's the same thing on this arm. You see there, and you know the placement because these two line up with the two holes that are pre-drilled in the bracket there, pre-threaded holes. And again, you should be able to use your hand to tighten it down loosely for now. It says do not fully tighten the screws, right? Or pinch the upright wire here. But as you can see here, there's a little bit of a cutout. So make sure you just put the wire there. That way you avoid pinching it. And we can go on to the next step here. All right, so step nine is just dealing with the console. We're gonna put the console face down Get the two cup holders in their place here. So you can see 94 and 101. Then we're gonna get the bar going across, attaching it to these guys here. Let's go ahead and get this console ready and get this bar ready. All right, we're gonna get these two uh, cup holders or whatever item holders in their place here. We'll do that in time lapse because that's the first step. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so in order to get these cup holders in place, you got your eight screws. This is it, uh, in step nine on the yellow uh, hardware packet. And then with your drill driver, just have it on a really low clutch setting. Mine's on four. That way you don't tighten these guys too much and it'll clutch out before it gets too tight, but it'll be tight enough to hold everything in place 
permanently. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the next step is to remove this crossbar that's gonna hold basically the entire console onto the uprights. It's right here. You have to take the screws out and that's gonna lift off and then we will install it onto the two arms on the uprights. So let me just go ahead and show you how to do that in time-lapse and then I'll show you how we are going to install it here. All right, step 10 is getting this uh, pulse crossbar into place on the two arms here. Let's see if I can do it. No, I can't do it with one arm. And these are the two screws and two bolts that you will be using for step 10. So let's go ahead and time lapse it. So the next step can be pretty tricky because we're going to bring the whole console over and then basically try to attach it to that, the uh, pulse uh, crossbar there. And we have to connect the two connectors here. And remember, it's just one set. They're really easy to connect. They just clip into place and there's only one way you can actually connect them. They have their, basically they have their male and female counterparts with the clip. So you just have to line everything up and it'll click into place. No problem, very simple. And then we are going to put the bolts in underneath through the arms to tighten down the console in place. I'm just gonna show you that one person can do this. Okay, so for step 12 to get the console, which I'll grab here in the time-lapse portion of the video to get one, two, three, four bolts in place. It's these guys right here. Make sure you have the star washers, but it's four Allen uh, bolts here, Allen head bolts. And we will get this console in place First thing we'll do is connect the cable to the console uh, female end, and then we'll put these four bolts in place. Hey, as you all saw, I tightened these four bolts down because it says in the instructions to do so. And then you saw me tuck in the wire here into the right upright. Step 13 is to get all these small screws. So we're gonna get all these screws in place here to keep that pulse bar from moving and securely tightened down. All right, there are actually eight screws under here. You got six across and then two, let me show you, and then two right there. One, two. These are the screws here. It's in step 13. So let's go ahead and get all of them in place. All right, now we are on, now that we completed step 13 here, we got the console in place exactly as it should be. We are going on to set the left handrail top cover uh, on the left and right. So basically putting the handle covers on the left and right side in place. Four screws going through the bottom on both covers. So I'll just go ahead and time lapse that. And just line everything up. You got the top and then the bottom that goes underneath the rail there. Okay, so a really important detail here on these four holes for the arm covers. The two outside holes, you have your drill on a really low setting or it's much easier to screw these two holes in because it goes into the two plastic posts that come down through the top piece. But these two middle holes, you're screwing screws into the metal arm here. And so you need to turn the clutch up a bit more in, a, in order to be able to get the screw into the pre-drilled metal arm. So just keep that in mind. If you find yourself drilling these two screws in easier, it's because these two are going into plastic and then these two in the middle are going into the metal pre-drilled, pre-threaded holes. Let's go on to the next step. All right, so right now, step 15, we're gonna get this latch bar in place. We're gonna install that right here. We got one, two brackets and I'm using something to hold the belt up in the upright position. Of course, if you have two people, then have someone hold it. 
as long as it's something pretty solid, you should be fine. I'll hold it into place. I'm just holding it under the foot right there, if you can see that. And it won't go anywhere until we get done. So let's go ahead and install this in time-lapse mode. So just orient it exactly like this, pointing outward. Get the two bolts in place. Okay, all the hardware is already included on this cross support bar here. So just take these off and get them ready to get that hydraulic piece in place. All right, now that we got the bar securely in place, um, just wanted to show you guys, there were two star washers remaining in that yellow hardware packet. So make sure you put the star washers on these two bolts here, okay? They don't come in here. Uh, when you take the bolts off, you gotta add those two star washers. Now we're gonna install the hydraulic brake slash upright position holder. And you install it with this side down. We'll take this bolt and nut off, and this side up. Now this side has a plastic placeholder. You just take that out as you're pushing this through here, or you just don't, you just remove the twisty tie and push the bolt through and the plastic will come through on its own through there. So let's just go ahead and do that. And of course, if you have any questions on that, please ask it in the comments. Okay, so we're good there, the hydraulics in place. And the way you bring the entire belt down is you just push it up a little bit so you can kick this in. And then once it gets past that point, you can basically let it go and it slowly comes down on its own. You don't have to uh, force it or anything like that. And it'll stop nice and gently. And to lift it up now, it's very light because you have the hydraulic, but there's a bar underneath the belt there. And you just bring it up, it'll lock into place. You hear it pop into place. And there you go. And then in order to move it, you just pull down against this. Let's see if we can do it here. And you lift up like that. And now it can roll. Just want to get this cardboard out of here. As you see, I put my foot down at the bottom to keep it from rolling forward or backward when I'm trying to move it. All right, so I pretty much have it where the customer wants it in front of the window, but I'll have it come out and we'll, we'll put it in place. But also don't forget to put the safety key here right there. That helps in emergencies if the speed is too high or Whatever, you clip this on your shirt or your pants. And if you go back too quickly, it'll stop the treadmill for you so you don't get injured. Let me just show you that we can do this one-handed. So you just push up, all right? And then you just kick it in. Let it come down a little bit and it'll, it'll just go down on its own. And about halfway down, it drops even slower. So I'll have the customer come out and we will have her put it, well, I'll put it exactly where she wants it and then uh, she'll plug it in. We'll make sure everything works. And then remember to adjust the belt. Like right now, it's pretty much lined up. If you want to adjust it left or right, it's in the manual. Basically these two holes right here, you take the Allen wrench that's provided, put it in the hole and then it'll tell you to turn half turn on each side either left or right depending on which way you want to shift the belt if it does not stay lined up or if it does move over time a uh, really simple process it takes a little time because you got to do half turns let it run so it can go either left or right and then if you have to adjust it again do another half turn so it's it's not it's not a difficult task just a little tedious and then with this Nordic track runners flex commercial 1750 the belt comes pre-lubricated and it says in the instructions that if you want uh, to get extra lube or whatever, just to go to the front of the instruction manual where they have their customer service number and you can get that. But the pre-lube belt should last you quite a long time. Um, but you'll know that the belt is running dry if it starts making some noise, some friction noise and whatnot. But let's go ahead and get her in here, see where she wants it, and then we'll have her plug it in. 
and you all are done with the assembly. I hope this video helped. All right, y'all, so we have it on. Everything is working fine, except you're saying maybe some of these buttons are a little sensitive. A little sensitive. But you have your monitor here that can adjust up and down. Uh, it's touch screen. You have your, uh, yeah, your fans right here. Uh, you can turn your fan up and down right there. You have Bluetooth speakers on this one, you said, right? Okay, so the Bluetooth speaker's there. And yeah, everything is center. She's been uh, walking on it, what, for about five minutes or more, right? Uh, seven minutes now. Yeah, okay. So the belt is uh, very center, so we should be good to go. All right, everyone, we have completed the assembly of this Nordatrack Commercial 1750 series. It looks good, it works good, and thanks for joining me here on Mastery Mayhem. I hope this video helped you all, whether encouraging you to assemble it or to decide whether you want to assemble it or not. And uh, as always, I'm looking for the best tools, tech, DIYs, and deals for you. And until next time, all the best to you and yours.